Good afternoon, this is Jeff, Sewer Tech Northwest. We are at 15580 Southwest Royalty Parkway here in King City, located uh, just to the left of the front doorway. Now, if you can reach around this corner here completely, that's the front door. So hiding in a little uh, green valve cover box, you have a cast iron clean out. It's got a plastic cap on it. Four inch diameter cast iron. We're going to check the overall condition and serviceability of the sanitary sewer line. Water is currently running. We're going to zero out the foot counter here at the base of the clean out. And off we go. All right, transitioning here into concrete pipe. Root intrusion there right out of the gate. unfortunately is, is fairly par for the course. King City is a, I've, I have done a, oh, I mean hundreds of these over the years in here. Um, they're, it's, a, it's a sewer system that is very prone to root intrusions. They're very shallow lines typically. A lot of the lines in here are not a whole lot deeper than two, three feet deep through the front yard, which really exposes them to roots. Um, but then you've also got Pipe materials that are almost always concrete pipe. Concrete just does not hold up well to, to root intrusions. So, and you've got a concrete line here that's, that's very much at the end of its lifespan. You've got very heavy aggregate rock exposed. Uh, most of the joints I've gone past, that one right there um, in particular is allowing groundwater and dirt to seep through it. Same thing here. So, and, and one good thing I'm seeing thus far is by and large, it looks like the line has remained in slope and grade. We'll see how the rest of this thing looks. The importance of that is if you've got a, a skeleton of a good line to work with, good slope and grade, um, you often have a candidate, in most cases anyway, for an epoxy liner, which is a trenchless repair system. So we're hitting a Y connection. I'm gonna go locate here. It almost looks like you may have another pipe lying in just on the other side of us. Um, we're going to see where this is situated at. Party lines are a thing in King City. Um, they're relatively prevalent. So, and I, as far as I know, I believe King City is is doing away with them. So we'll we'll see where this is situated here. We may have to to go a little bit further than this potentially. Yeah. So it, it does appear you do. As far as I can tell, anyway, it does appear to be a party line. We're, right now, as you stand looking at this home, you're facing the front of this house from the Southwest Realty Parkway. The line goes from left to right, shoots under the driveway, and right now where we are, vis visually speaking anyway, this essentially looks like you're right between this property, like on the dividing line between this property and the other. You've got this little set of brick that kind of separates the two properties. Um, I'm trying not to put paint on the neighbor's property. I hate doing that without someone's permission. So you'll see a, a green Y marking um, right where the two properties come together. I'm getting around six feet deep there. And I, I think this is one the city is probably already aware of. I noticed that once you make that turn, now we're shooting out towards the road. Um, the T marking they put onto the main lateral out there has actually a Y connection, has a has a double Y, which I, I think that's what they're indicating is that you've got that set up here. Now, not every house in here has one of these. It's at least in my experience, it's, I don't know, one in every four or five houses, something like that. pushing some debris in front of the camera that kind of blocked our view. That looks like the main there. So well, we're going to let the line drain out here for a few minutes. Uh, I may not be able to get all the water out of the line. As again, it does appear we have a shared line. I don't really have control over the, the neighbor. <clears throat> Either way, this part of the line looks like it's shared. And so this is where you'd have to get a hold of the city and find out 
you know, how how something like this needs to be done or dealt with. I'm just trying to make a pathway there so the water can get around my camera, okay? And I, I'm getting here at about six foot seven inches deep. I'm just just barely pulled back from the main here. About six foot seven is what I'm getting. I'm a little more familiar of how they how they do things over in the uh, Multnomah County Portland area. Um, this one is so darn close to the dividing line. I'm not sure how the city looks at these things out here, how they have people separate or reconfigure or what have you. So uh, my water's been turned off for quite a while. Now, this may very well be the neighbor's water coming to the line right now. I'm using a garden hose too, so that I don't have water coming from the interior. And that looks like almost like steamy hot water there. Anyhow, given that it is a party line, I, I'm not sure, you know, some, some places just simply go after party lines. They don't like the configuration and they want people to separate. And some other places do grandfathering, where the line, you know, is allowed to remain in place like that up until a certain point, or when a repair is done. Out here, I'm just not sure how they. So this is one I would I would contact the city. It looks like they're aware of the configuration already, as best I can tell with some of the markings they put down. Not, not knowing how they would deal with this. Some places they, they have you run a whole new sewer line out and tap the main in a different location. And that joint is really shot there, letting a lot of stuff come through it. I want to map this line out with marking paint, but at the end of the day, it honestly may not matter. If the city doesn't like the configuration, that your, your line may end up having to go a different direction potentially. I'm just not quite sure. Now that water's coming from behind me here. I'm not sure. Yeah, my water's turned off. I'm not sure where all that water's coming out of. Well, it's it's come to the clean out. I, as far as I know, I thought this was a vacant house here, but. <clears throat> and I dropped in here with the hose already running. It's possible there could be a toilet flap or something that doesn't turn off all the way or something like that. Anyhow, you'll see a green marking in the approximate location of that, that Y connection there. That's just to the right of the driveway. I'll put a few markings here and there just to give you an idea where, as to where things at. Uh, up till that Y connection, and, and really throughout most of the, the, the line, even past the Y, you've got good slope and grade. For the exception of that spot where that joint is just super blown, allowing tons of what, probably dirt and or potentially roots coming through. It may be roots. It might just be a lot of stuff coming out of the ground there. <clears throat> Either way, that joint is very open to the ground. In that spot, you have lost some slope and grade. Um, you know, if you could keep the configuration, you could theoretically still potentially do a liner on that spot trenchlessly. You're not going to have perfect grade there, but what you will have are pipe walls as smooth as glass, and it makes a, a short-lived little spot of standing water like that pretty darn insignificant at that point. Amazingly, this, this line has actually stayed in grade quite nicely, considering most of the joints in it are open to the ground at this point. All right, about three foot eight inches deep is what I'm getting here. And also, once you go through the Y, visually speaking, it's a it's tricky for me to be able to eyeball the diameter of the pipe. This looks like four inch cast. You will get some oddity sizes from this day and age, three and a half inch cast iron sometimes. So it can be difficult to eyeball the exact diameter. But sometimes when you hit those Ys, the line will bell out to six inch. It's just trickier to, to tell with your eyes when you go through a Y like that rather than just a straight diameter change and transition, which is very obvious, typically speaking. 
you know, I'm putting some markings down here about every 15 feet, um, just so you can kind of get an idea as to where things are situated at. That joint right there is a little bit wonky too, um, but looks like it would probably be lineable. <clears throat> but either way, be, before you even mess around getting bids and stuff like that, you, you want to get a hold of the city and find out if, if any of this configuration can even be kept. Um, if not, it, it, where, where the line is situated at right now really does not matter a whole lot. About two foot six inches deep here as the line kind of turns to head toward the driveway. A separated joint there. Got some roots. I have a feeling someone's probably had to do some cutting on those things at some point in the past. Anyway, due to the condition of the of the line, the cast iron here I would say is in fair condition. It's showing some scale and a little bit of roughness in the flow line. By and large, it's in fair condition for its age. That stuff is still functional. Uh, big concern is the concrete pipe and the, the combination of that and a party line, or what appears to be one anyway. I'd recommend, due to the condition of the concrete pipe, you've got a myriad of joints throughout the line uh, that are compromised and open to the ground, allowing groundwater and dirt in. You've got roots coming through. I would recommend a full update to all concrete pipe within responsibility. Um, and realistically, if you're going to be out here doing a, a, a bunch of repair work, what I would suggest, uh, not that the cast iron at this point is, is an, an absolute must to be updated, but if you're already in here digging, I would recommend at least taking that repair back to where the clean out's at and updating that, that bit of cast iron that is on the outside here. It's kind of small potatoes in the grand scheme of things. And then for, for little little to no extra cost, you're, you're just getting that much more updated and dealt with. So, um, One other thing, too, I would recommend, and I'm, I'm amazed this thing has not found its way into the sewer line yet. You've got a tree that sits, I mean, almost exactly on top of where the transition from cast to concrete is. If you update any of this, you're, you're then going to have either cast iron to plastic or you know, potentially an ABS to PVC transition or something of that nature. You just don't, you do not want to have trees parked directly over transition joints. I mean, any any part of the sewer line is not ideal to have a tree or, or bush over, especially at shallow depths like this. Um, that's one I would suggest, I mean, if it's, a, if it's allowed to, I mean, do what you will. If you love the bush, keep the thing if you can, but um, in my experience, when you plant stuff like that on top of a sewer line, especially at transitions, they, those are those are spots that roots get in extremely easily. I'm I'm very surprised it has not happened yet. Nine times out of ten, you could have every joint in the line open to the ground with dirt coming through it, and a transition joint that is otherwise sealed up, and the roots will often go through that one before the other ones. It, it, they're just a there's a lip on them usually whenever you have a transition. It's a good anchoring point for roots to grab a hold of, I think is what I've surmised over the 13 years I've been doing this. So, um, After any repairs are done, make sure a rescope is performed to check the work. Uh, when you're doing a trench style repair, it's very important uh, to do that rescope after the line is buried to ensure no settling issues occur. That's when bellies, offset joints, all that kind of fun stuff happens. Uh, so you want to make sure it's rescoped and rescope it in general. No matter what kind of repair you do, it's, it's very much worth doing that.